Good evening, all. I welcome you all for the Reda Academy, your online uh, education partner. And this is a session three on the chapter one, asexual and sexual reproduction in plants from botany class twelve. So we are going to continue this lesson as a session three. Uh, I before getting into this lesson, I just first like to summarize you on the uh, previous topics. So this lesson we classified into uh, just we just divided them into two half. One is on the asexual type of reproduction carried by the plants and the sexual reproduction in the plants. So in that session one we concerned on the asexual type of reproduction carried by the plants. There we studied about the vegetative propagation in detail. In that natural, conventional, and modern methods of vegetative propagation were discussed and in the second session we studied about the different events that takes place in the sexual reproduction we studied about the pre fertilization changes that is happening in a flower we studied on the structure of flower uh, especially we concerned on the androecium which is called as a male reproductive part the structure of anther and the structure of pollen grain or microspore and how they are forming through the process called as a microsporogenesis and at last we studied about the microgametogenesis that is the formation of two cell and three celled stage in the pollen grain so we stopped up to this in our session 2 so now we are going to see about Uh, the mahasporogenesis that is we are going to study in detail about the female reproductive structure that is either we are calling them as pistil or carpel so this pistil or carpel is the unit of gynoecium so gynoecium is called as the female reproductive part and this female reproductive organ is just looks like a in a shape of a bottle it has three parts in them so they are all ovary stigma style and ovary in that stigma is present at the tip of the female reproductive part and this stigma is going to um, receive the pollen grain which is being liberated by the anther during the maturation process so the anther will stick with the stigma and later as we discuss they are going to produce the pollen tube which contain the vegetative cell and the generative cell so this stigma is going to receive the pollen grain and this stigma is connected to the ovary by a long stem like or stalk like structure we are calling them as a style and at the end of the style a bulged structure a solovan structure is seen and that is called as the ovary and inside the ovary there is a soft tissue structure called as a placenta in the placenta the ovules are being embedded so placenta is the inner structure of the ovary in the uh, placenta the ovules are going to attach so this ovule is called as the female gamete so you can able to see the ovule which is present in the placenta so ovule is called as a female gamete okay so now we are going to study in detail about what is the structure of ovule so as we studied the structure of anther here we are studying the structure of ovule in the female Uh, reproductive part so ovule is as i uh, stated this is called as the uh, female gamete so this ovule has many parts in it so the first and foremost part is the funicle a stalk like structure which is going to connect the placenta and the ovule so funicle is a part which is going to connect the placenta with the ovule 
So we will attach with the placenta through this stalk or a comb madriana structure. So this is the finical region which is going to attach or connect the placenta with the ovule. And the part, the exact point where the funicle is connected with the ovule is called as ilium. So ilium is the point where the funicle joined with the ovule. And there is a long structure called as raphi. So this raphi structure is going to form the sides of the ovule and they are going to determine the distance between the finical and the ovule. So raspi is going to determine the distance between the finical and the ovule. Okay. So this structure which is present at the top, a soft spongy cushion like structure which forms the top of the uh, that is that is, is actually being inverted. This is an inverted ovule. So chalaza is going to take the basal part. So the basal soft cushion like structure is called as the chalazal region. And they are uh, covered by your integuments. Integuments means layers. So there are two layers present in the ovary ovules. One is the outer integument another one is the inner integument so we are having two integuments one is here and second one is here so two integuments are covering the ovules so when you are seeing inside this integument there is a mass of tissue or cells you are calling them as a New zealus. One of the very important structure of the ovule is the new zealus because this new zealus are first formed inside the ovule when the ovule is in the immature state. So like the same uh, quid we just studied in the structure of anther, there they are having a sporogenous mass of uh, cells present inside the epidermis. And these sporogenous cells will arise as an orchigonial cell. Then they will be dividing and forming all the uh, four layers of anther. Then they are producing the microspore. So this is the outline about the formation of uh, the structure of anther and the formation of microspore. Like the same here, New Zealanders are going to produce the sporogenous cell. So New Zealanders are very important as this is going to nourish the embryo as well as they are going to initiate the structure or they are involved in the maturation of the ovule. So New Zealand is a very important structure. And this New Zealand, at the center of the New Zealand, there is an oval shaped structure. You are calling them as embryo sac. So embryo sac is formed after the uh, cells are getting differentiated in the ovule. And this embryo sac is containing the egg cell which is going to participate in the fusion uh, process. So this is the embryo sac. And the integuments that is the outer integument and the inner integument are absent at the region uh, at small opening like structure which is called as micropyle. So micropyle is the region where the integuments are absent okay so this is some of the important parts when you are taking into concern about the structure of the ovule so i am not going to tell you what is antipodal cell and uh, secondary nucleus and uh, egg cell because we have to study in detail uh, when you are studying about the embryo sac so we have to wait until we are clear about the structure of ovule okay so uh, structure of ovule as the first structure called as a finicle which is going to make up the uh, stalk like structure which is going to uh, present the base actually. They are connecting the ovule with the placenta. So funicle that is the stalk. Okay. Then the integument we told you that is going to cover them 
we have two one or uh, two may be present and depends on the structure of ovule and we said the helium is the point where the funicle is being attached with the ovule and rafi i told you that the funicle is adhered to the body of the ovule that form a rigid structure forms a rigid structure which is called as a rafi and nucellus i told you that is actually the central mass of parenchymatous tissue what is the name of the tissue they may be asking you in a one word question so parenchymatous tissues are the nucellus so these are going to reserve the food material which is required for the nourishment of the embryo sac and during the development of the embryo and the micropyle uh, the uh, pore or opening region where the integuments are absent in them and chalas i told you that is the basal region of the ovule uh, where the nucellus integument funicle everything meets and merge so that region is called as a chalasal region which forms a base of the ovule and the embryo sac or the female gametophyte so this embryo sac is actually a oval shaped sac like structure which is present in the nucellus and that is going to participate in the uh, fusion of gamete so this is about the uh, structure of ovule some special additional points you can add up when you are seeing on the structure of ovule apart from the parts which we discussed so the one is that in some of the species the inner layer that is we studied about two integument that is outer integument and inner integument in very uh, few species uh, they form unitegmic 10 uninucleate type of uh, integument that is the inner integument that is the inner integument which surrounds the uh, nucellus so that integument will become a specialized structure and they are going to perform some nutritive function for the embryo sac such a type of inner integuments are called as endothelium or integumentary tapetum tapetum the word you are aware because namm uh, adu anther la discuss pannom so inner layer which is going to nourish the uh, microspore like the same the inner layer of the uh, ovule that is a integument inner integument sometime in some of the species become specialized and will go special functions or go so they will be storing the food material and they will provide the nourishment to the embryo sac and such a type of um, integuments are called as endothelium or integumentary tapet so the example for this type of special integuments are seen in the astraceae uh, family so there are another uh, uh, we are just broadly classifying the ovules in on this basis we are classifying into two type one is called as 10 uninucleate type and the one is crazy uninucleate sir crazy nucleate type so if it is a 10 uninucleate type here the sporogenous cells is hypodermal with a single layer of nuclear tissue around it that is when the ovule is in undifferentiated state that is formation agudhi ipo da ovule so immature state la irukumbodu they contain the sporogenous cell which are all hypodermal hypodermal means they will be present above the layer so they will be present above the layer and you can see only one layer of the nucellus tissue around them and such a type of ovules are very smaller in size whereas if you take a crazy nucleate type of ovule here the ovules will be containing sub hypodermal that is below the hypodermal region the sporogenous cells will be present and these type of ovules are larger in size okay so this is going to determine the uh, position of the seed in a fruit whether it is going to be in a distal end or proximal end so the decide pandrad edina in the type of ovules are going to determine the uh, position of the seed in a fruit
okay so there are six important type of ovules which we have to know okay so let me discuss one by one first i like to discuss on the um atropus or you are calling them as orthotropus that is the first type of ovule second type of ovule is the anatropus third one is ampitropus fourth one is ami hampitropus anatropus and the fifth one is campylotropus and sixth one is crichinotropus so konjo idu difficult a irukum pronounce pandradhukku but once you know the meaning of this type of ovule then it will be very easy for you people okay so first i told you that is of atropus type so picture first clear a paathukonga or definition solumbodhu you just keep the picture in the mind and here you could see that a micropyle end is present at the top so you can see the micropyle end at the top and chalazal end is at the bottom okay and you could see that uh, all embryo sac micropyle end chalazal all stands in one straight line okay and you could see that the ovule are inverted தலகிழக்கு <laughs> micropyle embryo sac chalazal all these structure will be stand on a straight line so that is called as a ortho or atropus okay so let me see here orthotropus can you able to see yeah so this is a type of ovule where the micropyle is at the distal end distal means top okay so the micropyle will be at the distal end and the micropyle finical chalaza all lies in one straight vertical line so example for this type of ovule will be seen in the family of piperaceae or polygonaceae okay piperaceae or polygonaceae and the second type is called as anatropus anatropus type of ovules are completely inverted so usually when you are seeing the picture idu dhan talakile irukudhu namakku thonum okay va but uh, exacta solla pona this is the inverted ovule exacta inda ipdi dhan irukku ovule paakradhukku but idu dhan vandu inverted structure but nama pictures la books la adikadi inda structures anatropus dhan paakradala nama nenaippu idu dhan right structure idu vandu inverted but actually anatropus is the inverted ovule not the orthotropus or atropus so anatropus is the inverted type of ovule so that you can see the micropylar opening is present at the bottom so that is present at the bottom and the chalazal uh, region is present at the distal end okay yes okay so at anatropus here the body of the ovule uh, become completely inverted so the micropyle and the fenicle come lies very close to each other so you can see that in the picture so here the fenicle is present here here the fenicle is present here and you can see that the chalaza everything are close together micropyle everything are close together so that's why they are called as a anatropus type of ovule mostly if you are taking uh, angiosperms or seeds adu dicot seed ah irundhalo seri illa monocot seed ah irundhalo seri angiosperms la vandu mostly they will be having anatropus type of ovule and third type of ovule is called as a hemi anatropus hemi nale half abindrad artho so pa paadi okay so half anatropus so that the body of the ovule are placed transversely at a right angle to the fenicle so perpendicular at the right angle they will be 
So the example for this type of Amy anatropus is the Primulaceae. Okay, we will see. So this is the Hemitropus. Here you could see that phenicle is present here, and you could see the perpendicular right angle present here. Okay, so they are just transversely present. So this is transverse, horizontal present here. Okay, so that is called as a Amy. Anatropus. So, the complete invert is the invert. So, that's why they are called as a hemi anatropus. Okay, wow. And the fourth variety is called as campylotropus. So, campylotropus of ovule here, the body of the ovule where at the micropylar end is just curved. You can see the curved structure exactly looking like a beans. Okay, or bean or a seed on the innamari curves, kidney shape la curved mo like the same. You could see the curve or the micropylar end. And the embryo stack is also slightly curved. And the three that is ilium, micropyle, chalaza, or at the adjacent to one another. Punthukapakatla on a arranger. And the micropyles oriented towards the placenta. So micropyle will be seen uh, towards the Placenta kitter. So that is the Campylotropus. Example is a leguminous. That is uh, Patani variety. Adala on the uh, Campylotropus lower. Here you could see very clearly on the Campylotropus. So this is a funicle region. And you could see the slight curve of the bends. Exactly the ingerkra mari of the ovala and the madri lama. There is a bend as seen on the Integument and also the embryo sac is a little bit of a So, placenta is a little bit So, phenicle is a little bit in the micropyle helium. Helium is almost curved and bent. So, towards the, the placenta is oriented away. So, that is called as a campylotropus type of ovule. Okay, and next one is the ampitropus. So, ampi is you know that it is having both the character. So the distance between the helium and the chalaza is very less. So uh, the curvature of the ovule will be clearly exhibited and it looks like a harsh shape in the madri. This is harsh shape. So you, the ampitropus will have a very lesser uh, distance between the helium and the point, uh, helium point and the Chalaza and you could see the horseshoe shaped structure. And this type of ampitropus ovules are seen in the alismatase. Okay. So here is the ampitropus. So in the ampitropus, you can clearly see that the helium. Okay. So helium is just too closer and you can see the curvature structure. Okay. So this is how they are. So that is why they are called as a ampi. And the last type is called as a Crichinotropus. So in the Crichinotropus, funicle is very long and surrounds the ovule. Funicle is very long and ovule is very long. So that type of ovule is called as a Crichinotropus. Example is Capcase. So here you could see that. Funicle parang just a minute. Yeah. So funicle you can able to see. So, they are covering the even the ovule. Ovule of the full cover under like funicles are very long. So, these are the six types of ovule. So, to keep in memory very easily, ortho or atropus type of ovule is just micropyle at the top. And uh, anadotropus micropyle is at the bottom. And ampitropus has a curvature structure. A me uh, anatropus, they will be transversely perpendicular. Campylotropus as lots of uh, uh, bend bean shaped structure will be seen in the campylotropus. And crichinotropus where the funicle is very long and covered the ovule. So, okay, wow. so these are the different types of ovule. So after we are seeing the structure of the ovule, now we are waiting into how the uh, female gametophytes are going to produce. As I told you earlier, micro means male, mega means female. So, mehasporogenesis refers to the 
formation of mehaspor that is the mehaspor mother cell mmc ange andha mari mmc padichirupinga microspore mother cell so that formation of this mehaspor mother cell is called as a mehasporogenesis and we are going to see how that is going to form inside a ovule so as the ovule develop from the immature state land or mature state ku develop aagumbodhu a single hypodermal cells in the nucellus become enlarged i told you already nucellus are very very important because that is going to differentiate and they are one who is going to form the mehaspor mother cell so inside the ovule structure intergaments irukku intergaments ku fulla ulla enna irukka podu nucellus da because it is a immatured uh, ovule so there is no differentiation of embryo sac adala edume irukka just a mass of cells will be present in them at the uh, single hypodermal cells will be present there. so this is called as a nucellus you are calling them as a nucellus in that nucellus then there will be enlargement oru sila cells mattum nalla perusa enlarge aidum so that cells you are calling it as the archisporium so that type of cell is called as a archisporium so this archisporial cells may directly function as a megaspore mothers endha vidhamana divisions edume illama directly they will be acting as a megaspore mother cell and start producing the megaspore sometimes uh, in other situation they goes for a transfer division adad ipdi or archisporium cell irukku na they will be dividing like this transversely they are dividing and they will become two archisporial cells okay so this two archisporial cells are called as the primary sporogenous cell or you are calling it as primary parietal cells one one the primary parietal cell this is forming the outer layer and another cell is forming the inner primary sporogenous cell either the archegonial cell will directly act as a mehaspore mother cell or they will go for the transfer division in that transfer division one which will be forming the Uh, outer layer that is primary parietal cells the outer layer and the one will be forming the inner mass of primary sporogenesis cell but nam and microsporogenesis padikumbodhu idhe concept da nam padicho so ulla irukra sporogenesis cells are preclinally and anticlinally dividing some of them are going towards the epidermis and forming all the three layers what are they endothelium middle layer and tapetum form so inner of clean uh, cleavage ai porda ellame microspore form pannu nu paathu adhe madri da ingiyo mehasporogenesis la so they are going to divide on a two portion outer portion la divide agurad ellame they are going to produce the primary parietal cell and innerly they are dividing to form the primary sporogenesis so this uh, parietal cell primary parietal cell they remain undivided or sometimes they divide either by preclinal or anticlinal division and they embed the primary sporogenesis cell deep into the nucellus so thodand in the parietal cells divide aite irukadala sporogenesis cells ivanga enna pandranga push pandranga edha nokki nucellus ku ulla podukra alavukku push pandranga then the indha mari podanja and the uh, sporogenesis cells da then they are later developing into the mehaspor mother cell okay so the primary sporogenesis cell i told you so which is being uh, functional as a mehaspor mother cell so in the madri nucellus nokki push panna patta and the primary sporogenesis cells da enna mara poranga mehaspor mother cells a mara pora then this mehaspor mother cell are undergoing meiotic cell division because the gamete form panna podunale reduction division la nadakku meiotic cell division and they are going to form four haploid megaspore ange namal dhan paathu ange vandu microspore mother cell vandu they are going to divide into tetrad naal pollen grains are divide agum microspores are divide agum nam paathu like the same the megaspore mother cell will undergo for the meiotic division to form a four haploid megaspore in that four haploid megaspore uh, only uh, 
one is going to develop and other three will get degenerated okay so motto moon mahaspur i mean naal tetrad illaya so indha mari naal vandu form aagum usually ivanga vandu linear tetrad da form pannuvanga microsporogenesis la abdi irukad indha mari clustered tetrads ipdi irukum tetrad idhila vandu linear ah irukum tetrad onnu ku apperma onnu indha mari idhila vandu chalesal end la irukra moon mahaspores me degenerated they will not be going to form the mahaspore so only one will survive and that survival is called as a um, monosporic development in solo so one one mattum da functional megaspora maaru that is female gametophyta develop aagum embryo sac ku la appo remaining irukra moona enna aguna they will get degenerated abbe uh, dissolve aidu so that is why we are calling them as a mono mono means single so only one spore is developed out of the four uh, divided cells so that's why we are calling them as a monosporic development example polygonum sometime it may be bisporic sometime it may be tetrasporic sila megasporogenesis la rendu rendu naal la vandu rendu mattu functional la maaru சில டைம்ல நாலுமே ஃபங்க்ஷனலா மாறும் இட்ஸ் டிபெண்ட் ஆன் த டைப் ஆஃப் ஓவியூ ஓகே அண்ட் டைப் ஆஃப் பிளான் ஸோ யூஸ்வலி செவன்டி டு எயிட்டி பர்சன்டேஜ் ஆஃப் த மெகாஸ்போரோஜெனசிஸ் லீட்ஸ் டு த ஃபார்மேஷன் ஆஃப் மோனோஸ்போரிக் டெவலப்மெண்ட் தட் இஸ் ஒன்லி ஒன் வில் பி ஃபங்க்ஷனல் அதர் வில் நாட் கெட் திஸ் சிங்கிள்ட் ஸோ இப்போ நான் சொன்னது அப்படியே பிக்சர்ஸ்ல காமிச்சிருக்கேன் யூ கேன் ஏபிள் டு சி தட் ஹியர் திஸ் இஸ் கால்ட் ஆஸ் அ மெகாஸ்போர் மதர் செல் ஃபஸ்ட் மியாட்டிக் டிவிஷன் அப்போ ஸோ இப்போ ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் இதில் வந்து டுவெல் நம்பர் ஆஃப் குரோமோசோம் இருக்குன்னா சிக்ஸு சிக்ஸ் அப்படின்னு டிவைட் ஆக போகுது ஓகே ஃபஸ்ட்டு மியாட்டிக் செல் டிவிஷனில் தென் செகண்ட் மியாட்டிக் செல் டிவிஷனில் தே ஆர் ஜஸ்ட் கோயிங் டு ஃபார்ம் இங்கே வந்து ஆல் திஸ் கோயிங் டு ஹாவ் அ சிக்ஸ் தட் இஸ் செகண்ட் மியாட்டிக் செல் டிவிஷன் திஸ் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் அ ஈக்குவேஷனல் டிவிஷன் ஏன்னா இங்கே என்ன நடக்கல ரிடக்ஷன் நடக்கல அப்படியே எக்ஸாக்ட் காப்பி வந்து ஃபார்ம் ஆகுது ஆனால் இது மியாசிஸ் ப்ராசஸ் ஸோ யூ ஆர் காலிங் தேம் ஆஸ் அ ஈக்குவேஷனல் மியாட்டிக் டிவிஷன் ஸோ டூ பிகம் ஃபோர் ஃபோரா மரிட்ஸ் ஓகேவா ஸோ ஆல் ஆர் ஹேவிங் அப்ளாய்டு நம்பர் ஆஃப் குரோமோசோம் என் தே ஆர் ஆல் ஹேவிங் அ அப்ளாய்டு நம்பர் ஆஃப் குரோமோசோம் அவுட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஃபோர் மெஹாஸ்போர் த த்ரீ வில் கெட் டீஜெனரேட் மூணு என்ன ஆயிடுச்சு டீஜென்ரேட் ஆயிடுச்சு ஸோ ஒன்லி ஒன் கெட் என் லார்ஜ் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் கால்ட் ஆஸ் தி ஃபங்க்ஷனல் மெகாஸ்போர் ஸோ யூ ஆர் காலிங் இட் ஆஸ் அ ஃபங்க்ஷனல் மெகாஸ்போர் அப்படின்னு நம்ம சொல்லுவோம் ஸோ ஒன்னே ஒன்று தான் சர்வைவ் ஆகுன்றதால இதுக்கு பேர் மோனோஸ்போரிக் டெவலப்மெண்ட் அப்படின்னு நம்ம சொல்லுவோம் ஸோ நவ் தி ஆர் ஃபார்மிங் த ஒன் மெகாஸ்போர் அவுட் ஆஃப் ஃபோர் ஸோ நவ் த மெகாஸ்போர் இஸ் ரெடி ஓகே so now this megaspore is going to as i told you see here i had given some example for the bisporic allium is an example for bisporic and tetrasporic example is the peperomium so here all the four megaspores will be uh, developed as a functional megaspores so then the ovule generally has a single embryo sac ella ovules me generally angiosperms oda ella ovules me eduthu paathina ulla ore ore embryo sac da irukku ஓகே அந்த எம்ப்ரியோ சாக்குள்ள ஒரே ஒரு மெகாஸ்போர் தான் இருக்கு பிகாஸ் மிச்சம் மூணு டீஜெனரேட் ஆயிடுச்சு ஸோ தே ஆர் ஹேவிங் அ ஃபங்க்ஷனல் ஒன்லி ஒன் ஃபங்க்ஷனல் மெகாஸ்போர் விச் வில் பி ஃபார்ம்ட் அஸ் அ எம்ப்ரியோ சாக் ஆர் அ ஃபீமேல் கேமிட்டோஃபைட் ஸோ திஸ் மெகாஸ்போர் இஸ் கோயிங் டு எலாங் ஹிட் அண்ட் தே ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிவைட் பை த மைட்டாட்டிக் டிவிஷன் ஸோ ஒன் அப்பா ஆஸ் த இப்போ ஒரே ஒரு மெகாஸ்போர் தான் இருக்கு அது வந்து என்ன பண்ண போகுது எலாங்கேட் இது மாதிரி எலாங்கேட் ஆக போகுது தென் தே ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிவைட் அண்ட் ஒன் வில் பி கோயிங் டு த சலேசல் ரீஜியன் ஒன் வில் பி கோயிங் டு த மைக்ரோபைலர் ரீஜன் ஸோ ஒரு செல்லா இருந்தது இப்போ என்னவா மாறிடுச்சு மைட்ராடிக் செல் டிவிஷனில் ரெண்டு செல்லாக மாறிடுச்சு ஓகேவா ஸோ த ஒன் வில் பி ஃபவுண்ட் இந்த மைக்ரோபைலர் ஆக்சஸ் அண்ட் தர் வில் பி ஃபவுண்ட் அந்த தி சலேசல் ஆக்சஸ் and after this nucleus are going to the both the pole they walls doesn't form so avanga vandu avanga nucleus ah mattum da irupaangala thavara 
செல்லா மாற மாட்டா எப்பவுமே ஒரு செல் டிவைட் ஆகுதுன்னா ரெண்டு ஸ்டேஜஸ் இருக்கு ஒன் இஸ் கால்ட் ஆஸ் தேரியோ கைனசஸ் அனதர் ஒன் இஸ் கால்ட் ஆஸ் தி சைட்டோ கைனசஸ் ஸோ கேரியோ கைனசஸ்னா முதல்ல நியூக்ளியஸ் வந்து என்ன ஆகணும் டிவைட் ஆகும் ஸோ தட் இஸ் கால்ட் எஸ் கேரியோ கைனசஸ் தட் இஸ் ஸோ இப்போ செல்லு செல்லுக்குள்ள ஒரு நியூக்ளியஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் என்ன ஆகும்னா நியூக்ளியஸ் தான் ரெண்டா டிவைட் ஆகும் So that is called as karyokinesis. After the karyokinesis, the cytoplasm will start divide and they will be forming two cells. Then cell wall form. Cytoplasm is the cell wall. Now you can see what you are doing. Cell is the cell. Then in this stage, only nucleus are divided. So you cannot call them as a cell. you are calling them as only nuclei so in the term romba romba important ena nama embryo oda apparatus oda structure padikumbodhu nuclei ingiradhu vera term cell ingiradhu vera term so confuse pannika kudad so nucleus divide aanalu avanga enna va irukranga nuclei da irukranga because they are not surrounded by the cell membrane once it is surrounded by the cell membrane then they will become a complete cell okay so as walls are not formed they are just a nuclei one nuclei went to the micropylar end and the nuclei went to the uh, chalazole so two daughter nuclei are formed okay and now as the vacuoles the vacuoles which is present uh, the centrally they are having a vacuole central large vacuole will appear between these two daughter uh, nuclei they are forming a large vacuole so this large vacuole is going to push the nuclei to the two polar ends okay so they are going to push the uh, daughter nuclei to the two polar or uh, that is two poles opposite poles of the embryo sac so rendu pole ku vandu avanga poida pora okay so one to the chalaise cell pole another one is to the micropyle pole so after they are reaching the pole again they are going for the second mitotic division and then third mitotic division so second mitotic division varumbodhu they will be forming two two cells so one cell vande inge two a maaru adhe mari inge vande one cell vande two a maaru idu vande second mitotic division adukapra marubadiyum or third mitotic division pogumbodhu they will be forming four cell at the chalazole region and four cell at the மைக்ரோபைல் ரீச் மொத்தம் எட்டு நியூக்ளியை வந்து என்ன ஆயிடுச்சு இப்போ ஃபார்ம் ஆகி ரெடியாக இருக்கு ஓகே ஸோ ஆஸ் ட்வைஸ் மைட்டாட்டிக்கலி தே ஆர் ஃபார்மிங் ஃபோர் நியூக்ளியை ஆட் ஈச் போல் டோட்டலி வி ஆர் ஹேவிங் எயிட் நியூக்ளியை நோ ஸோ ஓகே ஸோ ஒரே ஒரு மெகா ஸ்போராக இருந்தது என்ன ஆயிருக்கு டிவிஷன் ஆகி டிவைட் ஆகி நவ் வி ஆர் ஹேவிங் எயிட் நியூக்ளியை பட் தட் ஆல் எயிட் நியூக்ளியை இஸ் ப்ரெசன்ட் ஒன்லி இன்சைட் த எம்ப்ரியோசாக் ஒரே ஒரு எம்ப்ரியோசாக் தான் அதுக்குள்ள இப்போ எட்டு நியூக்ளியை வந்து இருக்கு நவ் தீஸ் நியூக்ளியை ஆர் கோயிங் டு அரேஞ்ச் இன் அ பேட்டர்ன் ஒரு பேட்டர்ன்ல அரேஞ்ச் ஆக போகுது அண்ட் சில நியூக்ளியை வந்து செல்லா மாற போறாங்க பை ஃபார்மிங் த செல் மெம்ரேன் அதர்ஸ் த ஜஸ்ட் கோயிங் டு ரிமைன் ஆஸ் அ நியூக்ளியர் லெட் வி சி ஹவு தி ஆர் கோயிங் டு அரேஞ்ச் இது பிக்சர்ல காமிச்சா உங்களுக்கு கரெக்டா புரியும் ஓகே யா so i told you only one megaspore is become functional other i mean this is called as a megaspore mother cell uh, first meiotic cell division and second meiotic cell division rendu cell division nadandu mudiyumbodhu four megaspores are formed tetrads so they are arranged in a linear fashion okay out of the four three get degenerated only one is remain and this megaspore or embryo sac is haploid in nature and they go for the first mitosis and they are forming two nuclei two nuclei after the two nuclei are formed because of the vacuole they are pushed to the poles so this is the chalazel pole and this is the micropyle pole so the rent pole ka the push ahead then they will be going for the second third mitotic division 
and they are forming eight nuclei. How many nuclei? Eight nuclei are formed at the end of third mitosis. Then, after the formation of eight nuclei, three of them are present at the chalazal uh, end. Three of them are present at the micropylar end. Two of them are present at the center region. And the Maria arrange three, two, three. Abdi form panera. So one they are being arranged in such a way. So the three which is present in the chalazal end, you are calling them as antipodal cells. Because these nuclei are surrounded by the cell membrane. Cell membrane on the cover panni or cell matich. So nuclei are in the NMA marriage. Cell marriage. Okay. Wa? So they are surrounded by the cell membrane and become a cell. So there are three cells present at the chalazal end. And you are calling these three cells as antipodal cells. Okay. Wa? And then in the micropylar end of the three cells are three cells. Because they are surrounded by the membrane. So, this is nuclear. 1, 2, 3. Moon nuclei. In the moon nuclei, what is the Nuclear membrane, I mean cell membrane, surrounds the nuclei. So, these two are called as synergids. Synergid cell in solo. This structure is a flask. So they are in a structure of a flask and they are going to take the micropylar end. And they are producing a filiform apparatus. Very, very, very important because this filiform apparatus is going to produce a chemical substances which is going to give a signal to the pollen tube. In a pollen tube are blind, right? They have to get into the style and they have to reach the uh, embryo sac. For that, they require some semi chemical signal. So, that chemical signal will be given by the filiform apparatus. Apo on the pollen tube, vegetative cell in the signal a correcta catch panita, correcta varaga in a panwanga, style varia, ulla travel panni, exact a micropylar region a reach panwang. So, yung rendipirk nadula kra interaction na creating the pollen pistol interaction. So, synergids are very important. And the one which is present at the top of the synergid is called as a egg. You are calling it as a egg. So, this egg is haploid in nature and they are the one who is going to fuse with the male gamete. You know, the male gamete would have fused panni zygote to produce panna poronga yaar in the egg. Da. Okay. Fine. So, ipo the end of the motto Four nuclear in the chair, other moon nuclei one the cell membrane form penny cell la mari in the chalazal region. Up in the oropolar nuclei can achieve in the nachina, they are moving towards the center. In the center and okay, move penny one the chair. And then in the pathina, they marry four nuclei out of which three are being surrounded by the cell membrane and they will become two synergic one egg cell marriage. Up in the world nuclei can achieve idu on the center no key travel panic and centrally they will be present and they are all called as the polar nuclei of dinamism because they are still in a nuclei condition because they are not surrounded by the cell membrane separately. Okay. So now they are all um Antipodal region like the moon cell may they are all yen applied are kanga. Ade mari synergid so yen applied are kanga. Ego yen but polar nuclei are rendi nuclei. Another polar nuclei in a condition are kanga. Deployed condition. So the polar nuclei is in the deployed condition. So in the stage, now the female gamete is ready and you are calling this as the Egg apparatus. Enan kupra angla number egg apparatus. Paakar the mandu oru mutta madri erik. Liya? So the mutta kulan cells ala enna erche. Correcta exacta oru form metu kondu nindi ta. Okay? So, mehasporogenesis got over. 
now the female gamete that is embryo sac adukulla egg cell polar nuclei la ready a irukanga fusion process kaga already microsporogenesis mudinjichu then the pollen grain are now being deposited on the stigma by the process called as pollination and they are going to produce the pollen tube so uh, the, everything is ready so pre fertilization even get over so gametogenesis mudinjichu male gamete pollen grain has been formed and female gamete the ovule has been formed and ready so now the second step is the gamete transfer so the male pollen grain has to uh, transfer from the anther to the stigma so in the process da vandu we are calling it as a pollination process abhi nu so so in the pollination process and uh, how it is happening what are the different agents that is responsible for the pollination and what is the result of pollination uh, pollen pistil interaction this is all we will uh, study in the upcoming session session 4 la pollination patti detailly we will let we see okay and after that we will getting into the second event of the sexual reproduction fertilization or post fertilization changes yo Uh, session file वंदे नम्बर पाक, okay? So I think now you get a very clear picture about the mesosporogenesis. So microsporogenesis we studied in session two, session three concern only on the mesosporogenesis, and session four, uh, the upcoming session will concern on the pollination types of pollination, how the pollination is going to happen, what are the agents that are controlling the pollination that we are going to see in the session 4 and it will take one more session that is session 5 for the second event uh, fertilization and post fertilization changes maybe two more sessions also needed i think so 5 6 7 even it takes because this is a, such a very long process and you should have a detailed view on this because uh, weightage in the lesson ko digo so nariya questions kekpaanga twisted ah kekkuradhukku nariya chances are so you have to get ready with this lesson so i am just going it section by section or a topic ah edukra nanu ena ore nerathla ellathiyume push up panna you can't able to get it up so we are just going step by step so it is will be very uh, easy for you people to prepare for the exams okay so thank you all uh, let me meet in the next sessions discussing on the pollination thank you